Hello, RMIS fourth grade bass and cello. So last week, the cellos were included in the violin violas video. This week, the cellos are included in the bass video, and I'm going to explain why. Um, I really wanted a week to work with the basses separately because they are cellos, just to catch you up. They are shifting. They have to move their whole hand. And hopefully, basses, if you're just now seeing this video but didn't catch last week's, make sure that you go back and watch that first because you're going to be real confused. Okay? My camera keeps sliding. Ah! Don't slide. Okay. I'm trying to get as much of me in this as possible so you can see. But uh, this is for cello and bass. And what I want to do is I'm going to review number 23. This is on page 10 and 11. Number 23, let's read D. And remember, this is high D. Number 24, C sharp, which for bass is two. No tape for C sharp. For cellos, it's three. High D four for cello, C sharp. High D for bass is shift to third position four and C sharp. And uh, we're gonna play through number 28, which is one finger on the A string for cellos. Four, remember, hand shape is important, basses. Four on the G string. Okay, it's just like F-sharp on the D-string basses, but it's four over here. So cellos, one finger on the A-string for B, and then um, four on the G-string for basses. So we're going to start at number 23, just remembering our notes. And how do we know which D to play? Do we play open D or do we play the high D? Well, look where it's written on the staff. Cellos and basses, yours is actually out of the staff now, right? You're up on a little itty-bitty line. It's called a ledger line. So here we go, this is number 23. I'm playing cello, so I'm gonna be talking through cello fingerings. Number 23, one, and two, and ready, and. Lift, set, set, tool. Lift, set, set, tool. to C sharp. So at this point, cellos were losing that pinky. Basses were losing two fingers. Now I'm just showing. I'm just doing this to show you. Don't don't pull your fingers back. I'm just trying to show you. Okay, that's a little hard to see. Two fingers. So your first finger should be on your third tape, and then your second finger is halfway between your third tape and your fourth tape, which should be down here. He doesn't have a tape or she. I don't know its gender. Okay, here we go. Here we go, C sharp, one and two, number 24 and this set set tool, this set set tool. So you might be really confused, You're like Mr. Stowers, your sound sounds weird. Well. It's because I have a rosin deposit on my string. So you hear how I went wub 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 I just took my sweatshirt or cleaning cloth you can grab from your kitchen. Nah, so much better, right? So if you ever hear those little bubbles is what I call them, blah, 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 in your sound, chances are you probably have too much rosin on your string. It's built up and you need to clean that off. Um, okay, now we're gonna jump over to number 28 and we're gonna read Let's Read B. Now, at this point, basses, you've been, you've played high D in third position, you just played C sharp, now you've got to pull all the way back to first position, which we've known all year, and B is four fingers on the G string for you. For cellos, it's just one on the A. Okay, so on our highest string, one finger, for basses on your highest string, four fingers. Ready? Number 28. Same rhythm applies. One, and two. And ready, let's read B. Lift, set, set, tool. Lift, set, set, tool. And again, cellos, I'm just trying to pull my finger back so you can see. You don't get into this habit. Don't get into this habit. Because listen, if I lift my fingers away, this is true for anyone. That's a big pitch difference. 
Uh, we don't want to get into that, right? We want to just keep it here, keep them close by. All right, so we played takeoff last week, number 25. Um, I'm hoping that's good. That's between D and C sharp, bases D and C sharp, right? Uh, so we're going to look at number 26, Caribbean Island, which I think we should have played through with everyone. Uh, remember, let's go ahead and review. So we know our first measure. Let's go and play our first measure. Two high Ds, then a C, two C sharps. So four, four, two, two, or excuse me, four, four, three, three cellos. D, D, C sharp, C sharp. Basses, four, four, two, two. D, D, C sharp, C sharp, have a space. Here we go. Ready? First measure starts on high D. Shifted third position, four fingers for bass, or one, two, three, four, four cellos. One, two, ready, and. Okay. Now looking in the second measure, you have high D, high D, open D, and that interval is called an octave. So it's gotta be really in tune. We don't wanna hear this. Ugh. Hold on. Ah, there it is. Okay. And because of that little bracket underneath, it's showing you you don't have to lift your finger. Okay? You don't have to lift your fingers off your A string cellos. You don't have to lift your fingers off shifted third position basses. Heidi, Heidi, open D, leave these down. Ready? Second measure. One and two. Your left hand shouldn't move. And high, high. Let's set settle. And we have to let's set settle back to the higher string. Remember, when we come down, you have to drop your elbow down a little bit towards your rib cage. Try to move this over just a little bit so you can see. It's very subtle. If you drop too far, start playing the wrong string. So let's go from the beginning that far, the first two measures. One and two and ready, first two measures. C sharp, C sharp. Keep your fingers down. Lift. Well, that third measure looks awfully familiar, don't it? It sure does. Uh, it's the same as the first, but your last measure, high D, open D, high D. So your elbow is going to kind of do this up in a way, drop it and push forward up. So if I took the bow out of my hand, up, here, here. It's like I'm making a circle, right? And the circle goes from my belly button to my ear. Not my belly button to my ear, my belly button to my left shoulder to my ear. This may look backwards to you in the video, I'm not for sure. So if you make a circle towards your cello, low and high, that's kind of the motion we need. So let's play the last measure. High D, open D, high D. Ready? One, two, ready, and. High D, open D, high D. All right, here we go. We're going to play all the way through and let's see how this works. All you need is high D, C sharp, or open D. High D, basses, C sharp, or open D. Always keep your fingers down in third position. One and two and ready, 26 and. <laughs> Settle high D. High, drop, jump back up. Okay. If you need to pause review or even go back to last week's video and review, that's fine, okay? You go ahead and do that. Um, but if you're ready, I want to go ahead and move to 27, the Olympic high jump. So we have this idea again, we have to move between strings. And you'll notice. Your first measure, high D, high D, open D, open D. That's a big jump. And it's got the bracket. And remember, the bracket means we don't have to lift our hands. 
So, uh, I'm going to play the first two measures for you. I bet in class you'd be able to do this on your own, but uh, just to give you an idea of what it should sound like, all of it's D except for one note in the first two measures, which is C sharp, right? C sharp. Here we go. Starts on high D. Listen first. One. Two, I'm going to try to walk you through it. High, drop, jump. D, D, C sharp. Okay. Now, the reason why I wanted to show you first is because the first time you did it, you went high, D, high, D. You drop and you pulled back for D. And the second time you went up, down, up. Well, this time it's up, up drop, back, up, up. There's a lot of this motion. Now, what you're seeing right now and what I'm seeing is um, my shoulder moving a lot. Um, I'm trying to overemphasize the elbow, the importance of the elbow. Elbow always tells us what string to play on, okay? It has something to do with the shoulder. Don't be looking like Hunchback of Notre Dame, okay? You want to make sure to relax so they're nice and tall. Feet should be planted. Don't put your feet behind you. I can sense right now some of you playing like this with your feet behind. Okay, here we go. So this is the first two measures. Basses stay in third position this whole song. One and two and ready, Olympic high jump. Now, the third measure looks very familiar because it's the same as the first. So what changed? The fourth measure. D, C sharp, D. Can we play that real quick? Four, two, four for basses. Four, three, four for cellos. One, two, and ready, last measure. Okay. Woo, let's see if we can do it. The whole song. I know that seems like a lot, but I bet you can do it. One, and two, and red T and open jump back up lift set settle high D open D open D high D C sharp high D all right guys that's all there is for this week I want you to practice 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 um, as of right now our concert is still on. I don't know anything. I don't know anything until I know. You know what I mean? Probably confusing to you all in fourth grade. Um, I Whatever information your parents have about school is the same information that I have. Um, that's way above my pay grade. So as of right now, we're still planning on coming back April 20th. Well, um, 20th, 21, 22, 23. April 23rd, Monday the 23rd. I hope that's the case. I don't know anything else at the time of this uh video being posted, so maybe that's no longer good information. Maybe that is good information. I don't know. I'm posting this on Wednesday, April 1st. So, your work for this week should be number 23, 24, 28. Uh, realizing where those notes are written. D, C sharp, B. You should also look at number 26. That would be one that we play on our concert, Caribbean Island. And number 27, which is Olympic High Jump. Again, something we play on our concert. Uh, the last one, we're going to start next week, or not next week, the following week, after spring break. You really want to make sure these are ready to go, because the next one's a little confusing. Um, and I'm not 100% for sure how I want to teach this. It's actually the D major scale. Scales are really important, you'll find, because they tell us what we're playing. It's kind of confusing to you right now. But a scale is a complete musical ladder. <laughs> It just sounds complete. What if I went... Ah, and that sounds finished. So we're going to talk about... It's kind of a little bit of what's called music theory. Uh, the theory that goes in behind why we do what we do in our instrument. Um, that's a little deep for fourth grade. It's something we, we really hit home in like middle school. But... I don't think you're too young to start learning about music theory, so I really am going to start talking more and more using theory terminology, so you're rip-roaring ready to go by the end of fifth grade. Um, I hope you're okay. I hope everything's going well for you all, and, you know, wash your hands. Um, 20, uh, 20, 20 minutes, ooh, 
20 seconds at least. Um, I miss your faces. I hope you're doing well. Let me know if there's any way I can help. See you guys until the week after spring break. Bye.